Bearings in trigonometry um, are often used by surveyors to find lengths and areas where you can't get through the land, such as if it's on water or if there's a fire or something. And this method that we're going to look at is looking at triangulation, basically finding lengths and angles using triangles. The first example is one of the simpler examples. We've got two fire spotting towers seven kilometres apart on an east-west line. From tower A, a fire is seen on a bearing of 310 degrees. And from tower B, the same fire is spotted on a bearing of north to 20 degrees east. Which tower is closest to the fire and how far is that tower from the fire? And we have to give our answer to one decimal place. Again, very first thing we should do is draw out our diagram. So an east-west line, east-west, 7 kilometres apart, we've got to work out which side tower A is and which side tower B is. So our fire is going to be up here somewhere. Tower A sees it on a bearing of 310, so it's going in that direction. So we'll say tower A is here, and 310 degrees is going to be up there, and tower B is going to be this side, it sees it on an angle of 20 degrees. And we'll just extend our line until they join up. Remember, anything to do with bearings, always draw in your north line. And we measure clockwise. So from A it's 310 degrees. So this whole angle going clockwise. 310 degrees. Okay. And also work out what's the angle in the triangle. So that angle there is 310 degrees. 3 quarters of the way around is 270. So this angle is going to be 310 minus 270 which is 40 degrees. Then we know that from B it's on a bearing of north 20 degrees east. So we're going from north to east, that's 20 degrees. Because this line is directly east-west, this angle here is going to be 70 degrees because it's 90 minus 20. So we're then asked to find which tower is closest to the fire. We could either work out both lengths and find the smallest one. Or your quick way is remembering that the smallest length is always opposite the smallest angle. Okay. So we can see that B is going to be closest. So B is closest to the tower as the length from B to the tower is the smallest angle that we have. We can't use the cosine rule because we haven't got two sides and an included angle or all three sides. So we're going to use the sine rule. Now the sides, 7 kilometres, is opposite the angle we don't know. But we can easily work that out because this angle here is 180 take away 70 take away 40. Which gives us an angle of 70 degrees. So I got that 180 minus 70 minus 40. So now I can use the sine rule because I know those two. And I'm trying to find A. So the sine rule is A over sine 40 equals 7 over sine 70. You can either use it straight away on your E activity. If you use your E activity, just type your values in, press enter, or A is 7 times sine. 40 over sine 70, which gives you 4.78 kilometres. We wanted our answer to one decimal place, so that's 4.8 kilometres. You might also even notice that because this, these two angles were both 70, it makes this an isosceles triangle. So actually A is also 7 kilometres from the tower, but you didn't need to do that one. This example is going to actually take us quite a long time. We're being asked to find the length CD, this length here. Okay. We've got lots of information, but at the minute we actually haven't got anything that's going to really help us find CD. So what we have to do is try and find a triangle that involves CD. 
and that one I'm going to use is A, C, D. You could have used B, D, C. Okay, that's going to work as well. And I think that's the way the textbook does it. And I'm going to go A, C, D. So I'll draw that triangle out. I'm trying to find length X. And the information I know in C, A, C, D is that this angle, so this angle here, is 80 degrees, take away 40, so 80 minus 40, which is 40 degrees. All I've got now in my triangle is one angle, and there's no way I'm going to be able to find anything else out from that information. So I need to try and find some more lengths or some more angles. I'll either need another angle and another length, or two lengths. The only length I've been given originally is the length AB, so I'm going to use something that uses AB that will help me find a length in my triangle. And that triangle there I can use, so ABC I could use to find the length AC. So I'm now going to look at that triangle ABC. Information I know on that is that this length here is 40. I'm trying to find my length B. I know that this angle is 80 degrees and this angle is 30 degrees. I'd like to use the sine rule to work out B, but in order to do that I'm going to have to work out the angle at C and that's 180 minus 80 minus 30. So this angle here is 70 degrees, so I'm going to use that. And now I can use the sine rule, because I can use the 40 and the 70 degrees, and B and 30 degrees. Using the sine rule, I'm going to have B over sine 30 equals 40 over sine 70. Using your calculator, solve that. B equals 40 sine 30 over sine 70. And that gives us B is 21.28 degrees. And I can put that on my triangle for AC. So that's 21.28. Now what I might decide I want to do is if I can work out AD, I'd then be able to use the cosine rule because I'd know two sides and the angle in between them. So let's see how we can work out AD. So we can work out AD, that length there, if I look at the triangle ABD. Similarly, we need to find the angle at D, because once we find the angle at D, we can use the sine rule to find length B. And the angle at D is 180 minus 110 take away 40, which gives us 30 degrees. So this angle here is 30 degrees. I'm now going to use the sine rule where little b again is b over sine 110 equals 40 over sine 30 working that out to give us b is 40 times sine 110 over sine 40 which gives us 75.18 and I'll put that onto my triangle here, 71.58. Now I've got two sides and the angle in between them so I'm going to use the cosine rule to work out x. So the last step for this part is x squared equals 21.28 squared plus 71 Point five eight squared minus two times twenty one point two eight times seventy one point five eight cos of forty degrees, which is one thousand nine hundred and sixty five point six four, and then we square root that to get x. So our distance from C to D is forty four point three four. 
or to one decimal place 44.3 kilometers. Now we're trying to find the bearing from C to D, so this angle here. And so how are we going to do that? Well, looking at it, it's not instantly obvious, okay. but it's probably going to be something to do with this angle here. So we might want to be looking at this angle. And in fact, if we continue the north line down here, if we can find this angle out, then the bearing from C to D is going to be 180 minus this angle. So how can we work out this angle as it's not the whole angle in the triangle? Well, what we can do, we again use our bearing rules. If you look, if we can find out the little angle, and we can do that because we know the angle CAB, is 80 degrees, so that means the bearing of C from A is 10 degrees. And using alternate angles, I've got a Z there, this tiny little angle there is also 10 degrees. So what I can do is work out my angle ACD, subtract 10 degrees to get the red angle, and then to get the bearing I'm going to do a 180 degrees minus the red angle. So what I'm going to do now is find my angle ACD and I'm going to do that looking at the triangle ACD which I was using earlier. I've now got three lengths so I can use the cosine rule to work out my angle at C. I could have also worked out the angle at C using the sine rule, but I'm going to use the cosine rule just to mix it up a little bit. So, cos, oops, cos C equals 44.3 squared plus 21.3 squared minus 75.2 squared all over 2 times 21.3 times 44.3 couple of points about that. Because I'd found out the length CD in an earlier question, I can use the rounded answer. And the second thing, just a reminder, when you use the cosine rule, because I'm trying to find angle C, it's the 75.2 that I take away. So cos C equals negative 0 0.097. So inverse cos of that to get C is 95.5 degrees. Now that's not as finished, remember. That was only as finding the angle ACD. Next thing I've got to do is take away 10 degrees from that to find the red angle here. So red angle, it's not very mathematical, but we'll just say it's 85.5 degrees because it was 95.5 minus 10. And then my bearing... is 180 minus 85.5 because this is 85.5 I want that angle so it's 180 minus the red angle which gives us 95.5 degrees true and I need to put a zero because it's a three figure bearing you can see there's actually quite a lot of steps to that question and it will take you quite a long time. So it's not a big need to do lots and lots of those because there's so many steps.